What is up everyone today? I will be talking about the Green Bone Saga by Fonda Lee, Jade City, Jade War, Jade Legacy, and I will be talking about this spoiler free. So, mostly just my general thoughts on the series and if I'd recommend it or not. First general thought, favorite book? Jade City. Second favorite was Jade Legacy for me, the third book, and then the second book was my third favorite book. Now, you guys might be wondering if this series is worth the hype, because if you've been watching BookTube for any length of time recently, you've definitely seen these books get talked about quite a bit. And my short answer to that is yes, I would recommend it. Now, here's a quick synopsis. You guys can skip ahead if you've already read the series. But basically, we are on an island called Kaycon, and this island is basically run by the Mafia, and there are two major clans, the Mountain Clan and the No Peak Clan. And as you soon find out, the Mountain Clan is obviously on the tall hill in the main city, and then No Peak has, you know lower lands. And basically this island was colonized by a much larger world superpower, but they break free of the colonization prior to these books, and they do that with these clans. Basically the two biggest revolutionaries started separate clans, and we are following around the grandchildren of those revolutionaries who are now leaders of the clans. And we are coming into a time when the clans are getting a bit more hostile towards each other, and the city is divided up in half between them, and then there's like an area in the middle of the city which both clans are trying to take control of. So that's the setup. Now, the magic system is based around Jade, which you may have guessed if you read the titles of the books. But the island of Kaycon has Jade Mines, and the Jade isn't like normal Jade in our world. The Jade gives you pretty stereotypical superpowers. You get stronger faster, you can defend yourself better against various things. Um, there are ways you can heal yourself with Jade, or heal other people. Obviously, healing other people is easier than healing yourself. So, it's a great magic system, and the Jade is obviously tied in pretty intimately with the country's economics. And both the two large clans get an even amount of Jade, but then there's obviously a black market for Jade as well, and other countries want Jade because... It can make their militaries more powerful. Also, the clan structure has basically two wings. You've got the pillar at the top, which is the godfather, more or less. And then you've got the horn, which is kind of the military wing of the clan. They enforce the streets. They prevent the other clan from invading and stuff. Uh, they will launch attacks. They will do various things like that. And then you've got, like, the economic side of the clan, which is run by the weatherman. And then they make sure the businesses of the clan pay tribute to the clan. And is this book for you? Well, mafia stories aren't really something I've gravitated to in the past, but I don't think you really have to love mafia stories to love this series. As long as you like just fantasy and fairly rich world building and a lot of like mafia-like interpersonal conflict and sort of drama like that, I think you would like this series. There are a lot of pretty explicit sex scenes in this book, especially in the third book, so if that doesn't appeal to you, maybe don't pick up the series. And also, I think a lot of the characters are morally gray, so that's something you may not like. But I think the characters overall are pretty easy to root for, or it seems that way, based on a lot of people's reactions. And a lot of times when characters do something bad or wrong, there's some sort of cultural relativist explanation for why they're doing that bad thing. So, for example, there are duels <laughs> to decide conflicts in this book. Obviously, that's a bad thing, but that is also their culture, so they do that. This world is also a patriarchy and pretty homophobic, and there's definitely a lot of abuse of children in one way or another. So, yeah, definitely a lot of darker elements and trigger warnings and all of that. So, what are my thoughts on the series? Well, I really like the world overall, and 
the world is pretty similar to our world, actually. And you certainly see that as the series goes on. Uh, the first book, it's more of just like a general mafia sort of thing in a world that is similar to ours. But later on, when you see Espenia and Yugatania, <laughs> and it's like, oh, this is like a very similar situation to the Cold War between the United States and the Soviet Union. And KCON is kind of like Japan or maybe Korea or someone who's more on the side of Espenia or the United States, but they're also still pretty protectionist and aren't going to let their natural resources just get absolutely plundered by the United States. So I do like the world overall, and I like the city of John Loon, and, you know, like the businesses that we get to see, like the Twice Lucky, which is a restaurant, and it's the restaurant that the No Peak clan's family goes to all the time. And, you know, like the school and everything presented feels like it's something that's in this world. And all these different places are described really well. So I like the places and how they always feel consistent, but I also like the people and how they always feel consistent. As an example, Hilo, in a very early scene, is visiting his adopted brother Andin at his school, and Hilo's like, an adult, so I found it kind of weird when Hilo started, like, attacking Andin in, like, the entrance area of the school or, like, a courtyard. I I'm not exactly sure where they were, but he just, like, started dueling with him and didn't, like, ask, hey, would you like to have a duel? It was, no, it was just like, oh, I'm, I'm attacking you now, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, this is, like, really weird. This guy kind of sucks. So, yeah, Hilo had those consistent, unlikable qualities of selfishness and having kind of a big ego and maybe being a bit hot-headed, but he also had consistent good qualities of being loyal and being charismatic and being, like, family-oriented. So, yeah, it was great how consistent the characters were. So, yeah, when I was blindsided by things, it would always be things within the plot, but not because characters were doing things outside of their character. And, yeah, that's the next thing I liked, the plot had a lot of good twists and turns and unexpected things. And even though the characters weren't blindsiding me, the plot certainly was blindsiding me. And the clans both trying to one-up each other all the time was a joy to watch. My biggest issue with the series, well, there's three things and they all kind of tie together. One is the villains, the mountain clan, big bad mountain clan. The leader, Ait Mata, is definitely a badass. And I like how smart she is and how, you know, evil and conniving she is. But her character motivations were a bit frustrating to me in that <laughs> basically her only motivation was just being power hungry. Or that's what it seemed like to me. Um, we didn't get Aitmata's points of view throughout the book. So we're kind of just left to assume that. Um, there's not too many other things that would make me think that her motives are anything other than being power hungry. So yeah, first complaint is the very flat villain of the Mountain Clan who's just a boring autocrat, which I guess is kind of a staple of the mafia genre, so we could just chalk it up to that. But that leads into my second complaint, which is that the world and the change within the world is very liberal. And I use the word liberal to mean just like liberal enlightenment values. So nothing that we don't all agree with are good things, right? Like peaceful transitions of power. And these liberal values are contrasted with the mountains values. And obviously as a society, we would prefer liberals to autocrats. At least most of us would. Obviously one of the candidates in my country didn't support results of an election <laughs> recently. So obviously most people support liberal values, I guess we could say. But Ait Mato's, you know, one nation, one clan. She wanted to be the leader of that clan. She didn't want anything like term limits or anything like that. She just wanted to be in charge. And then the No Peak clan was like, actually, I don't think we should have you be in charge of everything. That seems bad. And also maybe this person who's very old and senile, who's basically the king of our clan, should step down if he's 
you know, too crazy to rule. That's basically where we are at at the beginning of the book, where Hilo, Lon, and Shay's grandfather is, you know, too old to rule, so Lon is the pillar of the No Peak clan. But yeah, once you realize that that's the conflict, some of the things within the books get a bit more boring, especially because the world is so similar to our own that you can kind of realize, oh, like, this is kind of where this is going and nothing will really change here. But yeah, between Ait Mata and the Call family, they have like the bloodline rule to basically the whole country between both of the clans, which is basically a monarchy, which is obviously not liberal. So having like liberal reforms in that system is good, but I wanted a little bit more from the theme, especially in the second and third books. And yeah, that leads me to the third complaint. Well, wouldn't there be radicals who are, like, against the monarchy and stuff? Like, that would be cool to add that to the book. I, I won't get into too much detail, but basically any character who wants more radical change sucks. They're, like, the worst characters ever. And they're, oh my gosh, it's it's the worst. And yeah, again, this is more of a complaint with the second and third book where the sort of theme of very, like, moderate to center-right liberal reforms are opposed with the autocracy that is the Mountain Clan. But yeah, those were my overall thoughts. I would recommend this series, especially if you kind of like those more liberal stories within your fantasy books. And of course, some of the characters I liked more than others, and I think that's to be expected in any book but especially books with characters who are so morally gray. And whenever I didn't like a character like Hilo, for example, I felt like it was more because of the things the character did rather than how the character was written. But the things the character did were always in character, so I respect that part of it, even if I didn't like what was going on on my pages at particular points in time. But yeah, that's everything. Like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.